Now picture this, you're a pilot flying over one of the most isolated tropical atolls in the world and you have engine problems. You're going down and crash in the middle of the ocean. By some miracle you've survived the crash, but do you reckon you could survive what comes next? challenge today. There's some big ones down there. They're in the shallows now. Poor are you? Cut them into slices. We've got to be quick now. Look at this. There's a huge storm coming. Look at that smoke. Look at that smoke. There's an ember in there. If by some chance you make it ashore, then your challenges are only just getting started. But for me, on this uh, plane crash survival challenge, Fran, bless her cotton socks, has come and dropped me a little care package. So we've got some reef shoes. All pilot would be wearing a good pair of boots, hat, sunglasses, zinc, and a shirt. So in here, we've just got camera gear, guys. Head mount, GoPro one, a whole stack of GoPros. We're gonna be out here for a while. All pilots back in the day would have been wearing a like a Swiss Army knife or something like that on their on their belt. So I have come prepared with one knife. That's literally it, guys. One knife. That's all we've got. Let's start this challenge. So the first thing we're gonna need, and the biggest threat to you out here, is dehydration. Basically, we need to get water or some type of hydration ASAP. So we'll go for a bit of a walk and see what we can find. Thankfully, this stretch of the beach has got a lot of low-hanging coconuts. Uh, the green ones are beautiful to drink, so that solves that problem for the meantime anyway. Almost there. That's the bit we want to open up. Cut a little triangle. Yeah, baby. We're in. To a hydrating coconut. Uh, hydration is the most important thing. That's number one priority. Also, guys, I just wanted to share something and pay my respect. So that plane we came out of this morning, that was actually a plane wreck from World War II. The fate of the pilot is still unknown. So I just wanted to take the time now to really pay my respects to all the brave uh, men and women that served throughout that war. And while I'm out here doing a fun sort of survival challenge, in no way am I comparing the situation here to what they faced back then. With that being said, let's continue on. Now, one thing I do have on my side this morning, guys, is of course, I had my athletic greens before the plane went down. So the 75 vitamins, minerals, superfoods in that drink is gonna help me out here with things like my energy levels, endurance, and boosting my immune system, all things that are really gonna come in handy for a plane wreck survivor out here. So if you've got a bad feeling your plane's about to crash and you're gonna be faced with a survival situation, you wanna give yourself the best chance, or if you just wanna take care of your body's health, now is a great time to start, guys, and you're welcome to use our link in the description that will get you a special offer. So it'll get you a year's supply of vitamin D, plus five free travel packs, and also a 60-day money-back guarantee. So nothing to lose, guys. Now's really the time to start. I've been recommending it to all my friends and family and heard nothing but good things. And I'm just really happy to be on board with such a good company that's doing the right thing, not only by us, uh, by everyone's health, but the whole planet around us. They're doing some great things with charities all over the world. So if you do want to learn more about what they're doing, click that link in the description, guys, and learn all about it. Also, I've noticed there's some rock pools up here. Uh, that can be our next step. At some point, we need to find something to eat, and rock pools can be a great source of food. So we're basically just going for a big, long explore and, uh, and seeing how it all plays out. It's an impressive shell. When we're looking for food later, we'll be looking for anything like this. This here's a spider con shell. We'll be able to crack him open and then eat what's inside. And similar story with this guy.
more a eel. Out of the wind here. So in the rock pools, I did see a couple of more eels, but those size, they're pretty small and they're just full of bones. So you don't get too much reward of meat actually off them when they're that size. But something to keep in the back of the mind if we do get really desperate. Also, there's some colorful rock crabs scurrying around there really quick. Uh, once again, not too much meat on them, but they can be a bit of a, a backup plan. All right, so we've got hydration sorted with the amount of coconuts here. The next thing, of course, um, comes to food. And the fringing reefs all around here are loaded with great tucker. There's crayfish, coral trout, all sorts of good eating stuff. But that takes a hell of a lot of energy to go catch them. So I'm just going to go for a big walk and see what we can find that's edible. Of course, there's the dried coconuts that we'll get into at some point. We'll see what else we can find. Up here, you can smell the tree before you can see it. And it absolutely stinks. But here, guys, this is a great marinda tree. It doesn't say too much for the rest of the marinda family because there's nothing too great about it. I'll see if I can find any of the fruit. It, uh, it's also commonly called a rotten cheese tree and that's probably a better name. It absolutely stinks once the fruit's ripe. There's a couple of these ones down below. Oh, that's them there. They are like, I wish you guys could smell that. They are honestly horrible, like, ro like rotten cheese. But the good news is they are edible. That's them there. That's a good one. So these ones are all right. So we'll open these two up. They're not too stinky just yet. And we'll eat the inside. So not only is the stinky fruit edible, but also the young leaves um, are edible. And so out here, like when we're trying to balance the diet, of course, any greens you can get your hands on, just load up on them because you're yep. gonna need them, uh, need them for a bit of health. They're actually in the coffee family, these guys. Cut them open and we'll show you what they're like. So you can sort of just cut them into slices like that. And then just eat the whole thing. Block your nose and eat the whole thing. They're bitter. Pretty disgusting. Stink. But are edible. This here is a beech almond tree. If you look down here, there's a whole stack of dried beech almonds. So we will fill our pockets with these guys and save them for later. These ones here are too old, been sitting too long. And these green ones are straight off the tree. You don't want either of them, you want in, in the middle. So this is kind of their, they come off the tree looking like that. This is when you want them. And if you leave them too long, they dry out into that. We don't want either of them. We'll fill our pockets with these guys. And here's one cracked open. You can see the hollow of where the almond sits in there. When it comes to starting a fire later, anything that's washed in as driftwood, we've just got no chance because it's all salty and wet. So we want to come underneath these big timber trees and find a bit of actual genuine hardwood. That'll probably do it. We'll head around the corner here to the windward side of the island. That's where all the wind is washing all sorts of random objects in. Let's see if we can find anything else that can be useful to us. Holy guys, we've got to be quick now. Look at this, there's a huge storm coming. See that big dark cloud? That's coming right this way. But we'll come over to the windy side of the island and this is where everything gets washed in from the ocean up onto this point here. So there's going to be all, all sorts of interesting things. But I want to find something that I can make a spear with. That'll help me then to be able to go hunting and get something decent to eat. Let's go have a look. Look how many coconuts have washed in. Land of the coconuts here. Bit of toothpaste. Keep Fran happy. Make sure I'm brushing my teeth. No message. Oh, 
Oh guys, it is so damn windy out there. Uh, it looks like that rain is just gonna miss, miss us, I reckon. It's just sliding down past the island, but probably means we're a good chance of copping rain at some point tonight. This is a nice little keyhole out of the wind, so when I do have to make shelter, somewhere like this could be quite good, actually. Now this here is the cabbage bush. A uh, pretty interesting tree. It seems to be going quite prevalently on the, on the shore front here. And you can actually eat the smaller, um, younger leaves. I'll, I'll pick a heap of these, fill my pockets, and uh, we can have them later on for dinner. The other thing to watch out, these larger leaves here can actually be used as a type of contraception. Uh, you have enough of these, it'll, it'll work for about seven years, I read. So, anyway, we'll keep Fran clear of the bloody cabbage tree for the time being. Now I'm gonna fashion this into a prong spear. Um, you can see the bamboos, it comes in different sections. And basically ahead of this section here, we're gonna sharpen into the prongs. And then that'll give us a, probably a, you know, a long enough spear to cast and hit something. This, this bamboo's pretty light, so it's, it's not gonna be able to target anything too big, but around the rock pools, it could be quite effective. But before we split the bamboo any further, we need to bind this section here. Just binding this line all the way down this bamboo. Just leave that loop there. So once you're done, you can put the tail through that and then tighten it all under so you're not tightens and sits nice and flush. See how the knot's nice and buried now? It's never coming undone. Nice binding around that section now so we can now split our spear tip. There you go guys, the bamboo was a little bit rotten, so it's certainly not the best spear you're ever gonna see. But I think it's gonna do the job. A Couple of sharp prongs on there, that'll be enough for us to nail like a land crab or something in one of those shallow rock pools. Let's go for a bit of a walk, see what, see what we can get. All right guys, the elements are sort of against me here. That rain's come in pretty hard, which makes it really hard to see in the ocean, so. Uh, I'm going to go for a land crab. You can see these are all land crab holes here. One might just be a little bit small, eh, this one? Oh. I reckon he's a little bit small. I'm going to go for a bit of a bigger one. No, I'm gonna go for a bigger one. You can see they've got that one big, one big claw, so I want a, a decent sized crab to get as much meat of him as I can. How did I miss that? Look at them all down here, guys. There's some big ones down there. Which one's the biggest one? Which one's the biggest one? I think this one's bigger. Sorry, mate, I'm gonna have to do this. Oh, there we go, the spear worked. That's all it needed to do. See that nice big nipper there? That's what we're gonna be having for dinner. Yum. Put his lights straight out, didn't it? The spear works. Big land crabs up there. Small one. Uh, we want the big bucks with that big claw. See how this is a, a Jenny? It's got the small claws, a female. We want the big, the one with the big claw that we can eat. Sorry, mate. Oh, yep. Yeah. There's a big buck. Look at the size of that big claw. That's what we're eating tonight, guys. Yum. Got two of them now. And that'll do us for dinner. The spear's worked once again. All right, time is ticking. Oh. We are mission success on the crab hunt. See that big nipper they got? That's what we're gonna be eating. 
Now I want to find a little bit more food to eat. There's a moray eel under here that I could pretty easily nail with this spear, I think. Let's just have a little look. There he is. Woo. Sun is out, which makes it a lot easier to see through the water. And that tide's nice and low, so we're just gonna walk around and see if we can find anything hanging out in the shallows here. There's a sea cucumber or a beach demur. These guys are a bit of a delicacy in a lot of the Asian countries. But personally, I'm not a big fan of them. We'll put them back. It's a big sweet lip here, guys. There's heaps of fish through here. I need to be able to get one where he think he's hidden in a rock and pin him under the rock. These are all Trevally and Drummer. Look at all these fish here, guys. Just a bit too deep for this spear to get to them. Mm, ah. It's not very effective like this. It's too, too buoyant. I really need to pin them under a rock like that. That tide has dropped out now. You can see these tide pools. Sometimes some bigger fish get caught in these pools. You can see here there's some smaller ones, the convict surgeon fish for the lines down them. Oh. Oh. A nice cod here actually. Oh! He went out the back hole. Where'd he go, guys? Oh, there he is. Jeez, this is a nice one if I can get this. But the idea here is I've got to pin him under one of these rocks. go oh that's the one I'm after see the size of that one that's it that's a really nice size one for in here a nice dark tailed snapper all right oh he just kicked off all right all right all right he's under this ledge here guys we're gonna have to go pretty hard at him I think oh Did he go under here? He did too, bugger. Back to his big cave. This is too big a cave, this one. I, I don't want to just blunt my spear, jamming it in there, I'm trying to spook him out. He must have a good hiding spot right at the back, bugger. See these bright blue, your green parrotfish there? We're gonna follow these guys and see, this one here's a nice size one, see if they go under a bit of a cave thinking they're hidden and then that's my chance to get them. Coming this way. I don't want to spook the whole lagoon yet. I just want to corner these guys into the rocks. Here they go, here they go, here they go. All right. Get them in the rocks there. We're going to get one of these guys. They're in the shallows now. Oh, oh, that was a bad throw. I've got to corner him in the shallows here. Come on, come on, come on. Where'd they go? I thought they went under here. 
Oh, I was so close. Where did he go? Far out, disappeared. Bugger. Oh, there, he just made a run for it. They were hiding right there. This guy will be getting pretty tired now, so now's really my chance. Where is he? Where is he? Jeez, they were so well disciplined staying in there. And then on three, they just made a run for it and all came out of the rocks. Oh, I'm sure he went under here. Is that his head? Oh, he slipped off. He slipped off again. There he is. Oh, this is doing damage to my spear. Oh, he's under this big rock. I hate this rock, they can hide under here. No, he's under this one. I gotta get this fish. I've used so much energy chasing him now. It's taken a toll on my spear. This probably wasn't what the, the spear was designed for. Oh, there he is. Oh, two of them. Which one, which one, which one? Oh, not the deep water. Not the deep water, mate. No. Where'd he go? Not under here again. Oh, there he is. Yep. We're going around and around in circles with these guys. All oh, right. I think I've got him pinned here, guys. Felt him at the back of the cave there. Yeah, yeah, I've got him pinned. We just gotta get under there. Hope there's no more eels under here. Oh, I can't get my hand back there, but he's kicking on the end of the spear. There's some scales. He's in here somewhere, guys. I've got my fingers on his tail here. Oh, all right, guys, my hands are on his tail, but they're so slippery. All right, guys, jeez, he's slippery. There we go. A beautiful little parrotfish. Oh, wow. Sorry, mate. Might not be the biggest fish ever, guys, but that is gonna be a delicious feed. Sorry, mate, I'll put you out of your misery. You've had a, a tough battle. There it is, pretty tough work, but that's gonna be a really nice meal. He's come in on the commotion here, guys. Black tip reef shark. He would have smelt the commotion, sensed the commotion, smelt the blood. And he's come straight in. See him there? Sorry, mate, I won this round. Find your own food, buddy. They always sneak up behind you. I've been putting this off as long as I could today, waiting for the sun to come out. But now is the time we're gonna have to start a fire. We've got a couple of hours left of daylight. Let's get straight into it. This is that bit of timber from that hardwood we found. Uh, that's gonna act as our base plate. And this is one of the three sticks I've got to trial. So it's gonna take a while guys, we'll just get straight into it. Dig a hole that can be our fire pit if and when we get a fire started. This is really nice and dry. It's been under the shade of these trees and it burns really well. And these are obviously dead palm fronds from a coconut tree. They're both great for getting a fire started. The more you tear it apart, see how it really breaks down the matting and that makes it more uh, easier for it to get on fire. Next, uh, palm fronds. Really dry palm fronds. Get these nice small sticks on next. This is the really crucial key part here. This is the best chance I've got this stuff. If that goes, this stuff goes. If that all goes, in there and we're on. But we've got a bit of work to do yet. You can see how that's burrowing in the hardwood. 
and eventually it's going to cause a bit of heat due to the friction. Oh, oh come on, that's... Oh. There's a tiny bit of smoke. Is there a there. tiny bit of smoke there? Oh, there's a tiny bit of smoke there. Where did he go? Where did he? Come on. Ah. Thought I had that one. Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. that I even went to put the bloody second camera on the split second it took me to put the second camera on I lost the ember come on look at that smoke look at that smoke there's an ember in there Come on, this is like maybe fifth time I've got to this point. I need to let that get really hot. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Yes. Oh, my eyes. Oh. <coughs> yes, yes, yes. 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 Two hours later. Come on. Oh. I really didn't expect that to take so long. But I'm glad we finally had a win. Mission success. This is a good eating one. We'll bring this back to eat actually the flesh out of it. That fire's cranking now. All right, we're gonna open up one of these dried coconuts. These are great to eat on the inside, but with a small knife, it's, uh, it's pretty challenging to open. Just gonna go steady, steady around. The idea is just to cut sections once we get enough of them, we'll then be able to peel it off. There we are, guys. Had to wrestle with it, but this is a dried coconut that inside here is coconut milk. Um, but I'm actually after the flesh to eat this one. Tough work, but some good, um, great food inside it. So I'm not interested in this coconut milk in here, guys. You can drink a bit of that. But I've got some tasty green ones to drink. That's what I'm after, that's what I'm gonna be eating. Awesome. Best way to get this out, cutting away from yourself. Whoa. Just what I said, cutting away from myself. Bloody idiot, Jack. I think I'm really starting to fatigue now, guys. I'm getting pretty tired and making stupid mistakes. That's what I'm after.
Be a bit more careful to cut away from myself this time. Fish for dinner. <laughs> Alright guys, what I'm going to do now, this is one of those beautiful drinking coconuts. Plenty of these guys around, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to open him up. This is good for eating. I really want to add a bit of variety to the diet here, so those, um, those leaves I found earlier that you can eat, I want to do a bit of a boil up in this coconut. So I've left that like three quarters full. Gonna get the leaves in there, put them on the fire and make like a, a coconut and greens soup or stew, whatever you call it. It's bloody good for you. So we'll put that on, that'll complement the seafood diet. Goes the great Mirinda, those leaves. <laughs> Thankfully they don't smell as bad as the, as the ripe fruit. That's the cabbage there. Get it all in there. That's a good coal base going there. Straight on there. Parafish can go straight on there. What a sunset. Couple of crabs for dinner. Isn't that a bit of a mixed bag? All right, there we go, guys. So we've got, we're gonna have coconut. Oh no. I'm gonna starve from all the food I've wasted. So we're gonna have coconut as entree. We've got a soup, we've got the parrotfish, a couple of nice crabs. Probably one of the most scenic spots I've ever had a little sunset cook up, so things are looking all right after a pretty tough day. What a magic sunset. It's been a pretty successful day so far, but the GoPro batteries are running out quicker than anticipated, so I'm gonna have to be pretty selective with what I film from here on out. Um, but I'm gonna enjoy the last of the sunset, wait for that food to cook, and then we'll get straight into that food. I'm so hungry. Crabs. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm. <clears throat> nice. Hey guys, I hope you can see that and somewhat appreciate it. Oh yeah. That's a satisfying peel, cooked to perfection. Look at that parrotfish skin. So there we go for dinner, guys. This is gonna be a real highlight, the big crab claws. Got this parrotfish, you probably need a closer look at this. It's, it's pretty well done. Coconut, it's all looking pretty good here on the first night, guys. Um, as I said earlier, the most important thing was getting hydration. We were very blessed on this island with the coconuts. Second step was, of course, food. Pretty hard work, but we, we managed to, to get a feed together. Uh, fire was a pain in the backside. But anyway, that's enough yip yap. Let's get straight into the food. I'm gonna start with one of these crab claws. Oh, they're hot. Good meat in these crab claws. Wow. There's that parrotfish. Beautiful and tender. That's really nice, really, really nice. The coconut and green soup just needed a little bit longer. Those coconuts are so well insulated, it actually takes a bit of time for the heat to get into it. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That can be dessert. That's how the green soup ended up. Bit of coconut in there as well. It's all good for you, this stuff. It's really nice. 
Oh, that's a lie. Not that nice, but you feel like it's good for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 